Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL, and I'm out here today. I just finished up an activation of Blue Ridge Parkway and thought about one thing I had gotten a question about recently, and I thought I'd answer it here really quickly for you in a short video. Basically, the difference between uh, paddles and straight keys. Um, one of my subscribers asked about this, and it's sort of one of those things that um, operators have been doing this for a while don't even think about um, explaining, uh, but it's actually something everyone has to learn when they get into CW or they're, they're learning about this on their own. Basically, these are two different types of keying. This is called a hand key, and this is an electric key, basically, electric keyer. The paddle is set up so that, and, and by the way, I should tell you, I've got my Elecraft KX2 here. I do not have a dummy load with me today, but I have the power turned down to zero, so there's no power coming out of this radio, and uh, you'll be able to hear the side tone when I touch the key. Um, I've got this set up for iambic keying, and uh, when you have a paddle, it has a left paddle and a right paddle, like that. One side has dashes, one side has dits. If I press and hold the dits, it sends a string of dits. It will send it forever. Um, same thing with the dashes. So it combines to do So that was sending CQ, DE, K4, SWL. And I'm sending this at like 19 words a minute, but you can slow it down. So like if I want to move it down to 11 words a minute, Um, and so this relies on a little bit of computing power, or at least a, whatever is needed for an electronic keyer to work. Um, you can't just plug this up to a radio that doesn't have an electronic keying system built into it. All modern rigs pretty much do, unless you make a kit. Um, you know, like if you look at things like the MFJ Cub transceivers, which are kind of fun, um, simple kits, they don't have keyers built into them. They're designed to work with straight keys or with an external keyer, which is what people have done for ages. So they actually have an external box they hook up to their radio and they use that for keying. That's actually a really nice thing to do if you're used to, you know, especially if you're operating a lot and you want to make sure that when you're operating someone else's radio that the keying feels the same. If you have an external keyer, you plug it into their radio, tell the radio that it's a straight key, and then this, the little box does all the work for it. But I don't have one of those, actually. All of my keyers are built into my transceivers that I operate regularly for Parks on the Air. Uh, this is set up for Iambic B, I believe it's uh, called, and I have mine set up for dits in the left side and dashes in the uh, right side. When uh, you squeeze these, it'll actually, you'll, you'll hear me when I do CQ, I'll often do this. Or when you see me do it actually in a video, you'll see me actually form each character. I don't really need to do that. I could do, I'll try this, I'm not actually good at it. So I squeezed. If you squeeze like that, it'll just keep doing da 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 da. And if you do it the other way, go da 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 so it's <laughs> like that and um, I don't use that a lot but high-speed um, CW guys and girls do uh, they will squeeze and I've, I've watched people doing it. it's it's pretty amazing how fast they can do that uh, using iambic keying uh, my brain just doesn't work that fast so I don't do that now um, so if you're using paddles, which is what I'd recommend if you're doing a lot of parts in the air contacts and stuff, it's just less fatiguing when you're in the field. I think it's the reason why people, you know, design this. It's way easier to operate for long periods of time for me personally because I'm not used to using a straight key. But they do make straight keys. And what we have to do on transceivers like the KX2, I have to go into the menu settings and pull out this key. And I tell it, it, it wants to know that the tip is a dot and left, or well, yeah, the tip is a dot. I actually changed it to tell it to be a hand key. And now I can plug in a hand key. This is also a key by C.W. Morse, the same company that makes these. I like their keys because they're lightweight for field uh, use and they're inexpensive. They're not very expensive and they feel great. This is one of their straight keys. So a straight key is very simple. When you touch it, It, it's just a simple switch, basically. It's just turning on the tone and turning it off. 
So if I would set CQ, Now, there are a lot of different ways that people hold keys. Um, in fact, there are a lot of different ways people hold paddles. Some use their uh, middle finger and thumb, which is what uh, Pietro Begali told me to do. <laughs> he tells everybody to do that. And I, but I also use my index finger um, just to make it a little more ergonomic. The same thing with straight keys, depending on the key you have. You, can, you get used to using a straight key, and uh, people who are really good straight key operators sound amazing on, on the air. But to me, I find it a little fatiguing to use a straight key all the time. Sometimes I will do a parks on the air activation with a straight key just to do it, but, um, but they're simple. And any transceiver that has CW will work with a straight key uh, right out of the box, no matter how old the transceiver is. If it, if it does CW mode and you can plug a key into it, then it will use a straight key. And uh, CW Morse makes some super teeny straight keys, which I like having one in my pack just in case I need to do a uh, straight key operation. Um, I could have done that earlier um, in a previous video. I was using the ICOM IC703, and something's not quite right in the uh, CW settings, and I haven't figured out the menu item to fix it yet. I could have probably um, figured out a way to put it in hand key mode and just used a hand key. I didn't even think about it at the time um, because I didn't want to flip through all the different settings. But basically, that's a nice backup. Uh, if your electronic keyer's not working right, doesn't feel right, um, in a lot of modern rigs, they have actually quite a few um, different uh, uh, settings, like the weight of the keying, um, that you can change the ratio, that sort of thing. And so, um, <laughs> I've got a squirrel looking at me over here. <laughs> He looks like he's up to no good. Anyway, um, so uh, you can go into your settings on your radios and figure this stuff out pretty quickly. They usually make these pretty easy to find so that people can um, uh, change those in the field when they need to. But anyway, that's the basic difference between a straight key and uh, paddles when you see those. There are other keys out there, actually. There are a lot of other keys. There are straight keys that are like paddles. They have a single lever. Um, people call them a side swiper or a cootie. And they're also semi-automatic uh, uh, like bugs. Um, uh, if you look up Viberplex um, bugs, those are really wild um, because they're sort of semi-automatic. They send the dits uh, and uh, a spring and weight uh, pendulum sort of action gives you your dits, but you form your dashes uh, manually. And it's, I can usually tell when I'm working someone if they're using a bug because there's a little tiny bit of a swing to it. Um, but anyway, these are the two main ones you'll see out there. And I hope that answers any questions you have. Thank you very much for watching the video and take care.